Our conjecture that there is a lost yet once highly advanced ancient civilization could be proven beyond doubt by one continent in particular. Antarctica, for many millennia, this land has been encased, perfectly preserved, laying beneath miles of ancient ice. The Piri Rees map, something which we have discussed in the past, has long been argued to prove just that, long claimed as showing that of the landmass of Antarctica free of ice. If true, it would have been impossible to have created, according to modern paradigm, thought to have originated from the embers of the great fire of Alexandria, this catastrophe, a tragic loss to man's understanding of our own origins. Yet, this map survived, clearly displaying what many believe to be the continent of Antarctica, before becoming what is now a frozen ice cap at the pole of our planet. It is now an incredibly inhospitable place, one of the reasons we feel there may be intact, undisturbed ruins which may dot the land, known to be the driest place on Earth. And in addition to this compelling possibility of submerged yet highly advanced ruins, there may be many other unexplained anomalies that, due to their incredibly remote geographical placement, across some of the world's now most impenetrable natural obstacles recording some of the lowest temperatures on Earth, if proven beyond doubt to exist, would be proof of a preserved pre-Ice Age existence for advanced man. Yet due to this immense cold, and the fact that it is a largely unexplored tundra capable of killing even the most experienced of explorers, many things which rest here remain unexplored. Yet just like that of the face of the moon, one must ask the question, just what could be laying there, buried within or resting upon this giant ice sheet many miles deep? Objects just like the anomalies discovered in Roswell, New Mexico in July 1947, which, although strongly argued by officials as that of a United States Army Air Force's balloon which crashed at tremendous velocity at a ranch near Roswell, which many claim was in fact a UFO which crashed, would inevitably be covered up by whatever power was capable of not only visiting such anomaly, but retrieving it. Crashing into the seemingly endless tundra, and our next item of interest could behold just as controversial in origin as that of the causation for what many claim as the Roswell Conspiracy, a truth so controversial only top military personnel would be privy to. This remarkable image taken by satellite clearly displays an as yet unexplored anomaly. Resting at the basin of a hilltop, it presumably crashed into, with its velocity upon impact sliding the mysterious object down the side of the mountain. When other such objects have been discovered in the past, indeed in the same way as that of amateur sleuths, poring over satellite images looking for these exact features, military vehicles have been later snapped at these same locations, unquestionable proof of the world's government's interest in such discoveries, not only due to the environment, but also its remoteness. Found in permanently frozen areas could mean that if such objects do indeed turn out to be that of an alien craft, could also be in a condition to be successfully reverse-engineered if not repaired by man. A technological explosion would inevitably occur, a lucrative operation indeed. So we find it curious that several such events have been claimed to have occurred since 1947. Could this also be posited to be as a result of this exact claim scenario? Discovered, retrieved, reverse-engineered, and finally either adapted for military purpose or commercial profits? What is this thing laying far away in the frozen Antarctic? Is it indeed a crashed alien vehicle? We find the anomaly highly compelling. There is a lot of mystery surrounding the continent of Antarctica. Officially the driest place on Earth, the ecosystems within the South Pole are untouched and remain the healthiest anywhere, one of the main official reasons for the Antarctic Treaty. 
a cooperation of many of the world's nations to not pollute the area. The result of this treaty has been a ban of most human beings going there, unless crossing it on set cruise routes. If there are ancient ruins within this mysterious place, they will be buried under kilometers of ice, only the largest of which, would even show any evidence of their existence on the surface of the ice which encases them. These ruins may not even be classified as ruins, if they were flooded by a deluge, which in turn froze during pole shifts, they would be the most pristine ancient structures now left on earth, they may look as if they were abandoned yesterday. There are many strange reports from the region of Antarctica, usually attached to those not lucky enough to survive its elements, many researchers online claim to have found evidence of ruins and even pyramids within the South Pole. So, what I set out to do, was to attempt to find any evidence for a past colonization of Antarctica, and if our cover-up of these articles has ensued, to attempt to find any artifacts that were lucky enough to attain public exposure before their disappearance from the official records. It did not take me long to realize I was already aware of such an artifact. A map made in 1513, by Turkish Admiral Pyari Rees, created in accordance with ancient knowledge contained within manuscripts, which would later be lost during the destruction of the Library of Alexandria. Whether these fires which occurred over a duration of eight years, were orchestrated to steal these ancient books, or indeed to destroy them forever is unknown. But from this lost knowledge, the continent of Antarctica would be shown without ice. It was thought at the time that the manuscripts within the library, were only a few centuries old at most, yet the evidence would suggest they were very much older than assumed. Which is a conclusion numerous researchers have made. The map has intrigued countless individuals, and like so many other things we encounter, in regards to ancient knowledge, the most important of relics become lost or destroyed. However, the map is a surviving remnant of this vast mountain of intellectual wealth, it is the smoldering amber of proof needed to confirm such knowledge has existed before, and that the shores of Antarctica were known well, in the very distant past. If the map displays the shorelines of Antarctica before it was covered with ice, and it is displayed more accurately than Brazil, then it is not a large leap of the imagination to suspect that ancient ruins, dating back to the time of this knowledge, do exist on the Antarctic continent. And while we have ancient pyramids, declared as existing on all continents of the planet, apart from Antarctica, you begin to doubt that Antarctica is an exception after all. It could be home to the largest, with the southern tip of the world encircled by the stars, it may hold the most amazing ruins on Earth. And with it being a place that only recently have we been able to explore extensively, you have to wonder what other artifacts may be preserved in the ice, what objects may have crashed in this desolate place, during the last few thousand years, just waiting to be reverse engineered. So how does such a smoking gun, such as the Pyre Rees map, survive for so long? While throughout the centuries all the source material has been engulfed with flames around it. Well, the coastline of Antarctica was not known to be displayed on the map, until we achieved the capability of developing ground penetrating technologies. It well and truly slipped under the radar. There are countless conspiracy theories which have been created over the years regarding not only the coldest, but also the most remote, unforgiving continent on Earth, Antarctica. Countless tales of ancient civilizations buried in the ice, preserved like something akin to Pompeii, quite possibly complete intact ruins of an ancient, advanced, now lost civilization. Their lifestyles, buildings, even entire cities are claimed by a number of fringe researchers as a real reality. Cities buried miles beneath the ice in a state of perfect preservation. Although we feel this may be an unlikely possibility, there could indeed be undeniable evidence of a past existence still buried under the ice, if indeed they were there at all, for one can never really be sure about the Perry Reese map. Yet today, this is a very unforgiving place, even sparking the inspiration for arguably one of the best science fiction movies of all time. The Thing. Stories of UFOs crashing into this incredibly remote landscape, some in which we have covered in the past, focused in upon by the channel due to the fact that an expedition was indeed made to a particular anomaly, to a feature one indicative of a high-speed crash into the frozen tundra. This site was successfully traveled to within what we presume would have been a mobile laboratory, clearly undertaken by a well-equipped group one who clearly didn't expect others to have spotted the site via satellite also. 
so they can clearly be seen via satellite imagery arriving at said crash. A tremendous effort to make, at tremendous expense, thus, a strange effort for any known human-built craft, unquestionably made at great expense. Illogical for a man-made craft, even that of secret technology, but for an alien craft, such efforts could be logically argued as a realistic motive for whoever this team was funded by to make the mission to the site. And there are, indeed, undeniably, some rather intriguing stories which still hover around a number of still classified, still unreleased confidential files regarding events within the Arctic Circle, claimed by a number of individuals who also claim to have been a part of said mission. A mission known as Operation High Jump was an event during a battle within the Arctic Circle with what could only be described as flying saucers. But alas, due to the fact that Americans have never publicly released any details regarding the operation, we can merely speculate. However, a story which surfaced on ancientcode.com, a website we have long supported as a superb source of antiquarian knowledge, a story accompanied by what we think, you will agree, are some of the most incredible images ever taken of UFOs, specifically unexplained anti-gravitational craft in flight ever captured. Available thanks to John Greenwald from The Black Vault, who in turn received the incredible images from researcher Alex Mistretta. According to the website, quote, The photos here displayed are evidence of a close encounter between forces of the United States Navy and unidentified flying objects on the edge of the Arctic Ocean in March 1971." End quote. Are we witnessing the destruction of anti-gravitational alien craft, an alien encounter, or, quite possibly, weapons testing events targeting reverse-engineered alien technology? The images are, according to said sources, from the mission USS Tripang SSN-674. Our postulations as to what these images reveal are based upon our own logically presumed direction, in which American and many other advanced military nations would take if one were presented with a crashed craft powered by said technologies. These military bodies would indeed pursue the reverse engineering of said technologies, then, secondarily, develop defense systems which were effective upon said technologies. These are, of course, merely mystery history's ponderings in regards to what these images could truly be showing us. And of course, said hypothesis could indeed be incorrect. Yet regardless, the question remains, then what do these images reveal? What are pictured within? Regardless of the purpose of the mission, we find the possible theories surrounding the photographs highly compelling. Over the last few years, more and more modern technologies have been utilized by individuals with access to them in an effort to not only expose the truth regarding the real history of man, but to discover the actual original size of these now lost civilizations' ancient ruins. Many sites have been laid to waste, not only by future settlements and tomb robbers, but by Mother Nature herself. Many of these most impressive sites having endured eons of erosion after being mysteriously abandoned, exposed to the elements. Yet there exists a number of these sites which have been somewhat protected from these forces. Although vegetation can have a catastrophic effect, uprooting the megalithic foundations of these sites, yet the actual footprint of these structures, and indeed the overall size of these once lost settlements, can still be seen through modern penetrative radar, with one of the most incredible found in the past few years. Undoubtedly, the mega-metropolis hidden beneath the dense forests of Guatemala. Although some clearings dotted within this landscape have been spared, somehow avoiding the suffocation of trees, it has been discovered that these sites, long argued as separate sites of habitation, were, in reality, once part of the same gigantic city, one of unimaginable size and complexity that was unquestionably home to not mere thousands, but was in fact a settlement that was home to more than 10 million. Yet although this reality is a compelling, supportive fact regarding our own beliefs, 
in regards to a far greater, now hidden, and widely ignored history of mankind. There are still features of this ancient site that is still attempted to be ignored, overlooked, and hopefully concealed from the majority of the world's population, ultimately avoiding them questioning the true reality of what they have been taught, and the possible truth regarding our history, which these sites could provide to all those who gaze upon them. Although these particular megalithic blocks somehow stood on their heads, have been explored and exposed for nearly a hundred years, with many photographic expeditions having been made to these sites, it has now been proven that these megalithic blocks were not merely signposts made of stones in situ, but were clearly stones cut and once transported to their current location, and were actually strategically placed within one huge mega-settlement. This fact is attempted to be stifled, avoiding individuals questioning how, if indeed they were transported and cut by our more recent ancestors, the Mayans, how they actually accomplished this feat, when they clearly required now lost techniques and technologies, as although they were far more primitive, technologically speaking to the modern man, with us only accomplishing such abilities within the last century, all thanks to modern technology. This is clearly an identifying feature, which exposes the true capabilities of the builders of this enormous city, and the fact that although academics would like to argue that it was merely a Mayan settlement, it possesses, like so many other astonishing sights on Earth, as yet unexplained enigmas, which not only fly in the face of this explanation for their origins, but actually suggest that they were merely re-inhabited by the Mayans, allowing archaeologists to point the finger at such a group due to their archaeological fingerprint having been left at the location. Sites which were in fact built by a now lost, yet once highly capable ancient civilization, that due to their immense age has now been lost to history, like so many of their ancient settlements, lost to the sands of time, with only the foundation of which now survive, thankfully exposed by modern technologies. Who were these ancient people? How or indeed why did they move and cut such enormous, enigmatic ancient megaliths within this enormous, now lost city? It is a place which we find highly compelling. There are many baffling, anomalous artist depictions that litter the megaliths all over the rainforest which now submerge the super-civilization or mega-metropolis which was once known as the Mayans. Pekal's tomb and the strange rocket designs we have shared before, location now unknown, the seal seemingly showing a craft of ancient high technology, indeed not to mention his choice to have a vivid green death mask, all mere coincidence. Even the stolen plaque, fortunately photographed before its mysterious theft, depicting a doomsday event, volcanic eruptions in the background with drowning natives which accompanied a mass submersion found and subsequently stolen from Tikal. Mere coincidence? Yet, with all these compelling pieces of evidence, all these artistic accounts, whether through cover-up or lack of discovery and accurate artistically created depiction, of this event of a peaceful trade via ancient alien contact, what the argument needed to become unarguable may have just been discovered deep in the Mayan rainforests. Accurate depictions created in brittle yet precious jade tablets of considerable proportions, artistic interpretations of these events, and the giving of gifts actually once occurring. A statement released by Julia Levy, the Minister of Tourism for the Mexican state of Campache, Luis Augusto Garcia Rosado, the highest-ranking government official to go on record confirming the discovery of this possible extraterrestrial life, said, quote, Guatemala, like Mexico, home to the ancient yet advanced Mayan civilization, has also kept certain provocative archaeological discoveries classified, and now believes that it is time to bring forth this information. Rosado spoke of contact, quote, between the Mayans and extraterrestrials, supported by translations of certain codices which the government has kept secure in underground vaults for some time. 
in a telephone conversation with the rap, he also spoke of, quote, landing pads in the jungle that are 3,000 years old, end quote. 